Good afternoon and welcome to another week in our garden. Getting on with the planting now and it's a beautiful day so we'll get some more done today. Now we have planted quite a bit and we've filmed it. Some days it's been a bit windier than others so if you're watching it just bear with us. We had to do it in the weather so. Now today I'm going to put a few butternut squashes on this frame we'll pop in uh, a few Swiss chard and we'll get the pumpkins on their little patch plus what we've already filmed but Diane will fill that in as she goes these are the butternut squashes we'll be putting in as you can see they're called hunter and we'll put one line in here now I am waiting for more of the green support net to be delivered it hasn't come yet but when it does i can put some on the both sides of these i've only got one side at the moment i put them on both and i want to build that little frame in the p and b net so i can get bill and val's beans and peas on that a little bit delayed but they should be here any time now we're going to put them down here. What we'll do, we'll, we'll space them a little bit. Oh, put one in the middle. And, oh, not just there, but in a bit there. And there. We've got quite a few to put in. So we'll space them about a foot between. If we do that. And then this one I'll have to go on the other side. It looks a bit congested down there, but when they climb up and hopefully go over the top, there'll be plenty of room then. So let's plant these up. Now they're in, as you can see, one litre pots. So we need to make a good one litre hole for them. I'm not putting any fertiliser in with it. There's plenty underneath, underneath this from the winter digs. So they'll be, they should be fine in there. Just tip them out. It should be a good root on them. There is, look. Just level that bottom up. Like that. And in she goes. Just pile the soil against them like we did the peas and a bit of a press not too much pressy because they're a bit delicate on the root and then I'll do another one Now we had a lot of rain the other day and it's, it's still very wet underneath so that's a good thing for these. But we will water them anyway. There you go. That's a stone there. Look. Let's take that out. A big stone. I'll finish the line and then we'll show them in and give them a good water and even though it's very wet underneath it just wants that bit of water to settle them. I say it was plenty wet but this will just settle them down. Now put them in raked it down and watered it so they should be fine now just leave them to get on with there's quite a bit of tying in to do until they really get going on the on the mesh but they're 
they'll be fine once we get them up. This is the Swiss chard, different colours, it is mixed, there's yellow, green, an orangey colour and red, but I only want, there's 20 in there, at this stage I'll only want, uh, I think a dozen, two lines of six, we'll see how we go, but they do get quite big, but I must get the colours right, they'll be well rooted, as you can see. So let's lay the back line out and then we'll put them in. Now as you can see we're actually putting them under a net because the pigeons absolutely adore these. They'll pack them off right down to the bottom. They're very very useful in the winter these are. Gemma, Gemma has most of them but she's always asking have we got any left? You can actually put them in your flower beds and they look quite pretty, especially the reds and the yellows. This piece of land has been manured well, ready for these and the pumpkins, so these will go straight in. I'm using the trowel <coughs> because I haven't bought the bulb planter down, so it's just as quick. And make sure they're quite firm. There you are. I'll do three and then I'll plant them. Not quite as deep as that. That's better. Now, I'll pop the rest of these in and Diane will put some of the footage in of us already planting in that awful windy day we had. So uh, I do apologise for the wind before it comes, but I do think I told you about that when we was filming it. We'll see you in a short while. Now the wind has changed direction today so it's a lot quieter than it was when we started to put these in. As you can see, I got all the bamboos up and I've put in the plum tomatoes, which are San Maranzo 3. And there's just enough. I had a few extra, so I just put them along that line. Just in case. Any of these don't make it, then we can bring those across. But if not, they'll grow up as tomatoes anyway. So that, as you can see here, is all our tomatoes now planted for outdoors. Now, I still have a few tomatoes left that I'll have to give away. I know General wants them, the neighbours will want some. So there'll be no loss there. Although I've still got three Mountain Magic that I will actually find a place for. Out of the five seeds, only three germinated. So I will find a place for those because we want to see how they're going to do. Now we'll just pop into the bean and pea net and show you progress so far and what I'm doing at the moment. Okay? Now I've put the the beans and peas that are going to climb on the frame the first few peas are ones too these are the tall beans so they'll be cobra just enough to what we want there these at this end are alderman which will also get to six feet plus so that's all the high beans and peas in these what have started here are the Coco de Pampol. These don't get a lot taller than what they are actually so and that's half of what I've got to put in. This ground has been 
manured well in the winter and had plenty of barley straw dug into it so underneath is brilliant but the beans and the peas are very hungry plants so what I've actually done is I've dug a trench and then I've put in some blood fish and bone and some calcified seaweed plenty of it and then I shall just cover it a little bit as you can see and then we'll stand the plants in bring the soil back these won't need no support at all so that's now finished in the center here I have two lots of dwarf peas and one lot of dwarf beans to put in I should probably put those in at that end then we'll look what we've got left to fill up this space here I think there's some nice yellow courgettes that would just sit in here as well we're actually running out of room a little bit now we're catching up with the planting so let's see get these beans and peas in and see what room we've got if not we'll have to put the courgette somewhere else this is the trench I've dug I just chop it either side with the spade then scoop it out with the drawer out. then I get one of the books with these beans in there they are look, rooted well and then what I do they stretched a little bit but that was that awful weather we had it didn't know whether it was spring or winter still did it then what to do just move that over a bit I stand them all like that all the way along because there's quite a few of them I stand them like that all the way along what to do then is when I've got the full line on I stand I stride it and then I stand each one up I'll do it in twos actually and I just scoop the soil just to hold them until I've got them all done now as we're pushing it back we're actually mixing the fertilizer in with the soil as well so that's what you do to get them in just give them a tighten now what you must do with the beans it'll be easy to show you what's been done if you see what we've already planted I've actually ridged them ridged them up with soil to hold them yeah. all the beans and as you can see the peas have all been ridged up it just gives them that little bit of support and obviously a good watering and these will take off providing the weather holds these will take off and soon be up at the top of these nets right now that will be it for today tomorrow we've got some rain coming so I'm going to try and get all the beans and peas planted today so I'll let die go so I can go and get on now that's the chard planted now they are a little bit tight together in a few weeks you won't be able to see the soil at all they really do bulk up fast now behind the chard we're going to pop the pumpkins in the four they are a hybrid so we should get some decent results out of them all we've got to do is remember to keep them moist what I should do I should plant them in a grid of four with a space in the middle and then try and grow them in a circle depending now on the weather if we have a lot of wet weather they, they'll be over that fence and away across the fields now as you can see I've put them in the fall I should plant them and try and control them through the season they are a little bit fast growing as well so you have to keep your eye on them
pulling them slightly deeper so it stops them falling over. The other thing that the the slugs will be after these so we have to keep an eye on them. And the piece of ground has been well manured so they should give us good results. I'm not going to take these leaves off, I'll let them fall off on their own. Yeah, as you can see I've gone a little bit deeper with it. And then loosen round. Not too tight with these, just you know. I'll pop these other two in and then we better get some water on these. So I'll save four bottles and put those in so at least I can water them straight into the root because very very soon you won't be able to see that for leaves you'll not know where to put your water and with pumpkins I'll just water straight onto the root I might have to fetch a little bit more water for the last one, it won't take a second. Uh, we've got plenty of water in the can so we go round again with these. Pumpkins are ready for the bottles. There's no real rush until they start filling up but I'll make sure I get some bottles ready and then we can stack one bottle on top of another, pull bamboo through and then stack one on top of another because soon we'll not even be able to see the bottle that's in there. Now that'll be it for this week, I hope you've enjoyed it. Diane's got quite a bit of footage to also include into it. Apologies if it finishes up a bit long but it's good to show you what we're actually putting in so you'll be able to see it growing and then harvested for the whole life of the crop and you'll also be able to see what and how much this little strip of land can produce in vegetables, fruit etc. So take care everyone we'll see you next week thanks for subscribing we do appreciate it bye now